Thank you for joining us today. I'm San Francisco Chronicle business editor Owen Thomas, and I'm here with writers Nanette Asimov and Kathleen Pender. And we're here to talk about Silicon Valley University and the rise and fall of a Bay Area dream. So Nanette, Kathleen, this is not Stanford. This is not Berkeley. What, what was the school, and why did, why did it matter? You know, uh, if you are a student in um, anywhere throughout Asia, India, and you want to come to the United States, and you can't afford Stanford or Berkeley or wherever, and you think, or I, you can't get in, or you can't get in, uh, Silicon Valley University and that type of school, which is a private school but cheap and catering to students like this who want to come to the United States and live and work here and have a dream of getting into uh, the Silicon Valley economy and a job, even more maybe than they want to go to school, this is kind of their way in. They apply, they, the, everybody is accepted as long as they pay, and it's a way for them to get a visa and come to the U.S. and work in Silicon Valley if they can. And, uh, and the visa thing is kind of key, right? It Definitely. Is. I mean, if these schools weren't helping students get a visa called an F-1, um, there would be no point to them for these students, and there would be no, really, a, a, a cash machine for the um, owners of the school. This was a nonprofit. And what these kinds of schools that are sometimes, you know, accused of being a visa mill, mm -hmm. that nothing was proved in the case of Silicon Valley and University. A, and a visa mill, that's a term for like a sham operation. Right. It's, so nothing has been proved in this case, but uh, there have been accusations, informal. And so uh, what these universities do is they register uh, with the federal government, I believe it's under Homeland Security, for a program that allows student visitors to come in and that certifies these um, schools, if you will. Some of them are, are real, some of them may not be. And it's a, it's a mechanism for students, thousands of students uh, in, in other countries to come to the United States under the guise, perhaps, of getting a, a higher, uh, often a graduate degree in education. Uh, but what they, what many really want to do, not everybody, but many really want to do is work in Silicon Valley. Hence, Silicon Valley University, what better advertisement for such a thing? And Kathleen, how did, uh, how did this get on your radar and Annette's radar in the first place? Well, well, I'm a business writer, and I've been looking recently into some nonprofit issues. And, and what intrigued me was, as a nonprofit, they file a Form 990 with the Internal Revenue Service. And in 2016, on their 990, they had a line in there that said their former president had misappropriated $12.4 million. And the school was, for now, treating that as a loan and trying to get that back. And to me, that was just had all kinds of red flags that got me going. And that was sort of because the genesis the of what got us looking into this school. And when when we started looking at it, it was like your prover proverbial onion where there were just layers and layers of lawsuits, accusations. Um, according to doc court documents, the Internal Revenue Service was investigating them. The state attorney general was investigating them. And what happened, to make a long story a little bit short, is they lost their accreditation in December from a national agency that accredits these kind of colleges. Right. And um, when they lost that accreditation, that more or less, not automatically, but that would jeopardize their ability to issue uh, the type of visa that would allow a foreign student to get an F-1 visa. And so that was kind of the beginning. That's, they can appeal that, but that was sort of the, beginning, the beginning of the end for them. But it was somewhat of a technicality, the reason they lost the accreditation. But I think that um, regulators knew there was a lot more going on there. But uh, primarily, the, the letter that you found cited uh, a lack of audited financials. Right. Which, that, which, that's why, technically, this school lost its accreditation. Now, what is the current status of the school? So uh, 
The school lost its accreditation back in December, but um, as Kathleen mentioned, there were all these agencies looking at this school, and somehow the fact that they lost the accreditation got forgotten. And so a few months go by, and a complaint by the state against the school, which appears to still be going forward, which is um, filed by the California private university regulators and the attorney general's office uh, comes to our attention. And we notice that on this complaint, Silicon Valley University is listed as an accredited institution. So of course, we call up and we say, is that what you mean? It, it's an accredited institution? This was um, this mm -hmm. month, early this month. Two days after we made that inquiry, the state uh, regulator realized, oh, this is not an accredited institution. We're going to shut it down. Oh. And that is exactly what happened. So right now, they're in the process of shutting down. Um, they'd already lost. This school had, let me just say, nearly 4,000 students, the vast majority of them from other countries, mainly Asia. Um, and India. And India, which some would say is Asia. Um, so, <laughs> so East Asia, East Southeast Asia, Asia, Asia South India, right, Vietnam, yeah, Vietnam Korea. Um, and Taiwan in particular, the, the owners are from Taiwan. And so um, when this, this, certainly the students were not uh, unaware that the school lost accreditation. So all these thousands of students drained away quickly um, after the school lost accreditation. And by the time Kathleen and I came around looking, there were maybe 40, 50 people there mm -hmm. left. Uh, or maybe 20. Maybe 20. <laughs> One document. Right. It was 20. very empty yes. school, yes. a big, right. big, big empty school. One thing we noticed, though, that, that struck me as curious is um, that the school only listed 21 faculty members. We went back a while, and maybe at the most they had 28 in, right. in any version of that faculty page we were able to find on the Internet Archive. And yet they had nearly 4,000 students. That strikes me as a very odd ratio. And Kathleen, you found some things in their financials that looked <clears throat> very odd in terms of the tuition they were bringing in versus what they were spending. Well, the main part of our story, no one there would talk to us, uh, none, of the, none of the principals, none of the lawyers. Um, so everything we got is pretty much from court documents. But basically what was happening, it was run by a husband and wife team. And uh, their marriage fell apart. And, you know, as things happened, that's kind of when things at the school started to fall apart also. And there was kind of a boardroom uh, coup. The wife and her people ousted the husband. Um, and her brother got involved, too. Her, right? her brother was involved. There were other family members working at the school. Um, there were allegations that the president had misappropriated money. That was the husband. The husband made allegations that the wife had misappropriated money. We're talking thirty-five million dollars, yes. right? They, they, of course, they all you know deny any wrongdoing, uh, but it was quite. Uh, there was quite a lot going on there financially. Um, they were claiming that he was siphoning off tuition money, underreporting uh, their actual revenues. Um, he said that she was taking university money to buy homes. She had explanations for that. So underneath the story about the school and the students and were they getting an education, were they getting the degrees, were they getting the jobs that they really thought they would get was sort of like the dissolution of this marriage and this company. Well, I'm sorry, nonprofit. Right, and, and to your uh, question about um, how many teachers were there versus how many thousands of students were there. Um, we, Kathleen and I spoke with students and they said that um, they really did not rely on this school to get an education. They, they relied on it to get a degree. Uh, the students we spoke to had, one of them had an MBA and one of them had a computer science master's degree. Most students were in the master's program. But as for actual classroom learning, 
that is so questionable because how, as you say, how do you teach 4,000 students with 28 people, 28 mm -hmm. teachers? And so the students told us that if you wanted to get an education at Silicon Valley University, you had to get it on your own. And I think you said one of them used a, an online class. Well, so one said he learned more um, from online classes while he was here in the U.S. But I mean, there is a real school there. We saw it. It was quite large, 17,000 square feet, according to county records. Um, there were a lot of classrooms. They were all empty when we saw them, but there was an actual physical school. We, we didn't get to see what classes looked like when they had right. classes going on, because when we were there, it was more or less dead. on its way out. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so the school was had practically emptied out by the time um, right. you visited. Um, you wouldn't, uh, they wouldn't talk to you. How did you report the story, and what uh, what kind of problems did you encounter uh, as you uh, as you went about? Yeah, that? that's a story in itself. <laughs> well, you know, uh, public documents are extremely helpful. There are records of court. Uh, tr there are transcripts. There's records of all kinds of lawsuits and and uh, what lawyers say. And so, uh, normally, you would think that in the year 2018, particularly in the heart of Silicon Valley, you could just go online and look at these public documents. But um, at the Santa Clara County Superior Court in San Jose, that's not done. So you have to go, we had to go down there and we thought, well, that's all right, we'll just take a drive down and we'll go look at the uh, documents. But we found problem after problem just trying to look at these so-called public documents. First of all, um, we a qu we, we got these big, thick papers and started taking our cell phones out and taking photographs of them so that we could have a record of them and suddenly found ourselves surrounded by three sheriff's deputies because what we had not noticed, we didn't notice, I didn't notice, um, there are signs saying no photographs of the court documents. So, But we noticed that um, there were other people there using portable scanners, so that was permitted. Um, so you could scan the documents, but you couldn't take photos of them. Right. Which and is... we were limited to 25 copies per day. Now, these documents, uh, you know, probably if you stacked them up, they would have been this big. And, you know, as reporters, we rely on that's public information, those court filings. That made the gist of mostly what our story came from. But, but we could only have 25 per day. And since we came together, they said we could only have 25 between yes. us. We couldn't each have 25. <laughs> so it was just quite an ordeal. And, and a lot of times, lawyers will send you copies of their, at least the lawsuit they filed. But none Not of the in lawyers this in this case would send us any no. of the documents. So it was quite a lot of. Um, Note taking and a lot of lot of legwork to and get the documents. And we did buy a portable scanner need. eventually. <laughs> I I don't think people realize. You know, I think there's an assumption, especially in the younger generations, that everything's online. Right. And I don't think they realize the work that it takes to pull a story like this together. Well, and in the Santa Clara courthouse now, since January, they are. Uh, I think requiring all court filings to come in electronically, and you can sit there at the courthouse and look at these electronic documents on there. They call it a kiosk. It's mm -hmm. really a computer, but that's not available anywhere else. And you're still limited yeah. to 25 copies off the computer per day. So effectively, Owen, these public documents, are, in my opinion, are not really public documents. And, and I. Um, here I am on Facebook Live objecting to that because I think public documents should be public. They and belong to the they public. To the the public. public funds them. Right. Um, you know, when, when you go before the court, you are relying on public resources to have your case heard. Now, a lot of times uh, what federal court documents, the way it works is you can go online and you can pay online. So if it's a question of payment, you can just give your credit card number and you pay online for whatever uh, documents you want and then you can call them up online. That's, that's easy and it's a compromise because you're paying for it, but it's still available, uh, unlike the situation in Santa Clara County. Well, the, you know, the good news is that we at the Chronicle can um, send you guys down there to, to get these documents and get to the bottom of the story. So. Now let's get back to Silicon Valley University for a second. What is next for them? What's happening now? Uh, well, so 
um, on the one hand, they are effectively shut down. And so you say, well, what happened to all these thousands of students? Um, <clears throat> it seems that when schools of this kind that take in so many foreign students are shut down, and there have been others in the past, uh, students go from one to another. So many of these students have gone, we're aware and are, are thinking about other schools that, similar schools that the students may have gone to. But um, there is a hearing, uh, there are three hearings, I think, scheduled in June related to the state's complaint against Silicon Valley University. And we're wondering about the, that status. Will those, will those uh, hearings go on? Because, and what the state um, gist of that complaint is, is that the school was um, run poorly. It didn't keep records. It illegally, this is the allegation, it illegally used uh, recruiters, hired recruiters in Taiwan. You're supposed to apparently use only those employed by your school. And so there were 15 um, causes for discipline at the state. But I mean, are they going to continue with it now that the school is shut down? We're not sure. So far, it's still on the record that the hearings are supposed to take place. So uh, then there's a whole series of these investigations that Kathleen mentioned, and we don't know the status of those, you know, is the Attorney General looking in, is the IRS, whatever, uh, because none of these were confirmed, only alluded to in the public document, in the public record. So where it's going now, we're not entirely sure. Well, I think, uh I think uh, you can now read the story online on yeah. sfchronicle.com if you prefer our 3D printed ebook edition, also known as the print newspaper. Uh -huh. uh, that's going to be coming out Sunday. Um, but do you think there's more to come here? Well, yeah. we don't know what the intentions of the founders are. Um, they're not getting along right now, so I'm not sure if they're going to pull it together to rescue this school in some way, if they're even going to be allowed to reopen it. It's it's a question mark in my mind. But where's the money, Kathleen? Where's well, the money? That's, what, <laughs> that's the yes, other question. Where, where is all this money? The, uh, you know, the thing you can't forget was this was a nonprofit school. This was granted tax-exempt status. They're a public charity. And if you look at how the money was being used, I think in, in 2016 they had to file an amended uh, tax return because probably there was some money missing. But um, they took in about $30 million in revenues, which I assume was all tuition because they didn't get any grants or contributions. And they spent, what was it, $11 million? Something like that. And, and only a very few million on salaries. Mm -hmm. So they had so, about so $19 million dollars in profits untaxed. I don't know where that money is, what's going to happen to that. Uh, that is all, I guess, TBD. Chapter mm -hmm. 2. All right. Well, I think you all can look forward to it. Kathleen, Nanette, thank you very much for Thanks being so with on. us here today.